Hey folks, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, crypto assets, news and interviews. Today is Wednesday, happy hump day, July 17th. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're gonna do an update on XLM. I'll bring up the chart. We'll do some technical analysis. I'll give my thoughts and opinions. Getting a lot of requests about this one. It's been a while since we took a look at it, but uh, it is a daily bull flag target that did confirm. So we'll take a look at the measured move for that and what to expect in terms of price action in the days, weeks, months ahead. As always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. You should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say or write. This is for entertainment purposes only. And if you are new, you can subscribe, take the bell, all the good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. And uh, you can like the video, share it, help support me in the channel. You can also follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPal. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor of today's video, and that's BitGet. BitGet is a leading crypto exchange with over 25 million users and 10 billion in USDT in daily trading volume. BitGet also offers a variety of trading options and has the largest crypto copy trading platform. BitGet also has great transparency with industry-leading proof of reserve ratios. If you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description. You can earn sign-up bonuses by using our link, and it also helps the channel out. This is a paid promotion and collaboration with BitGet. All right, diving into the chart. So taking a look at XLM here on the daily time frame, you can see we had our low. We had that, in my opinion, that dump that was our final shakeout before a massive breakout. We had a nice recovery. We had our low, high, higher low, and higher high. We confirmed the daily uptrend. Then we had our EMA 12 and 26 bull cross follow through. Then we had another brief daily higher low, and we started to really track uh, XRP as well. XRP, one of the best performing coins, up about uh, 70% in the last little less than two weeks and it was following Big Brother XRP, Big Sister, whatever you want to call it. And then we had a brief daily higher low here yesterday, and anything above that 0.32 FIB there at 0.97 cents was a potential for a daily bull flag. And then today, once we broke to a higher high, we confirmed it, and then we take our measured move, and that same we're targeting about 13 cents here on the daily time frame. If we zoom out to the monthly time frame, we are just starting the monthly bounce having broken the high of last month. We're also gearing up for a monthly MA12 and 26 bull cross, which would only be the second time in history that we see that happen. And you can see here, last time that it happened, price went up to about 80 cents. So if we were to do something similar, I think we could get somewhere around that dollar to $2 mark this upcoming cycle. And if we take a look at our FIB extension levels and go from the high of the previous bull market in 2017 to the low of the bear market in 2019, you can see here that we get our FIB extension levels and what usually is a common area to target in new price discovery. Bitcoin, in its cycle, hit its 3.618 and exceeded that, and so did Ethereum. So if we see something similar for XLM, that would put us actually around $3.72. So maybe I'm being a bit conservative. I think a dollar to $2 is very conservative. And then on the high end, I think we could see somewhere to, you know, 3 to $5. But I'll definitely be locking in some, some profit at $1 and above. I'm definitely more bullish on XRP at the moment. If you haven't seen my video, I just posted it on the channel. It's not showing up yet, but you should go check out that XRP video. There's lots to be bullish on. We could see, you know, stablecoin legislation uh, very, very soon. We could see an end of the SEC versus Ripple case, which will be very good for XLM. We know they move in tandem. And then also, uh, you know, there's so many other bullish catalysts. Uh, there's Ethereum ETFs that are supposed to be trading next week. There was actually news that just came in uh, that... Uh, the SEC has approved Grayscale Mini Ethereum Spot ETF and ProShares Ethereum ETF. So things are heating up in a big way, and we're probably going to see some basket ETFs as well. And eventually there will be an XLM ETF as well, Spot ETF as well. So uh, things are heating up in a big way. In a big way, We have no monthly resistance until about $0.16 cents as well on the price action. After that, it's about $0.19, cents and then nothing really until... 44 cents. So things are starting to heat up in a big way. If we take a look at XLM BTC, which is just looking at the XLM price comparative to Bitcoin and the strength there, you can see here it's been now 12 months. So a whole year where we just had a lower high every single candle. So a whole year of dropping against Bitcoin, very close to monthly oversold. We were weekly oversold. And then this was the signal to switch out of Bitcoin into XLM and XRP as well. XRP had a little bit of a bump there, I think it was last year whenever we had that case, uh, the ruling in the case that XRP in and of itself was not a security, which it was a whole year on July 13th. Uh, so happy anniversary to that. But uh, you can see XLM has been even more beaten down with just a lower high every single candle. So the fact that we're bouncing now in the monthly time frame tells me that XLM and XRP are going to outperform Bitcoin here into the end of the year. And I think XLM and XRP are going to provide some of the best returns 
and uh, going to absolutely melt faces here in the end of the year. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, we're also seeing a stochastic and a MACD bull cross, and we're getting above the 10-week moving average, so all systems go. We'll want to see us close this week again over 10 cents and uh, see that uh, MACD remain bullish come the end of the week here. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, we've still got, what is it, four days, three hours. So we still got a while to go, but it's looking pretty good here as of right now on that weekly time frame. If we take a look at the weekly moving averages as well, you can see here that we have the 12 cent, so the 50, that'd be the 50 weekly there at 12 cents. So that is approaching. So we do have some major resistance there at 12 cents, but if we can get above that, like I said, we've got some runway until about 19 cents. On the daily time frame, we did have a death cross as well with the 50 above the 200 day moving average and that happened and we saw quite a bit of downside from there dropping below into the seven cent territory. Now we're looking for a golden cross with the 50 back below the 200 day moving average and we do have the 200 day there at 11.4 cents. So a lot of resistance there at that 12 cents. If we can get you know a few candle closes over that, like I said, get above 12 cents, probably heading to 19 cents in a hurry. But as of right now, things are looking great. Like I said, there's tons of B bullish on leading into the end of the year. We, it's an election year. We have IWM starting to reverse as well. If you haven't seen that video, I just posted it a couple of, a couple of days ago. Get ready. Market expansion is coming. And it's a major bullish signal because the IWM, the Russell 2000, tracks all of the small cap stocks. And as we know, you know, the broader market right now has just been absolutely exploding. And it's mostly due to the Mag7, right? A few tech companies, you know, think of your, your Apples, your Amazons, your NVIDIAs, right? Uh, they've been really stealing the show and creating those new all-time highs and upside in the S&P 500 while the rest of the market hasn't really been expanding. So the fact that IWM is confirming a monthly bull flag and uptrend is looking very, very promising because into the end of the year, that's going to be more risk on appetite. And like I said, with the election year just around the corner, with stablecoin legislation, there's so much to look forward to. We could see ETF after ETF approved. And you know you have to remember too, these ETFs getting approved, while it's a good thing here initially, it's probably going to be a bad thing here in the medium term, not so much long term because, you know, we'll get through it and, you know, we'll enter a new bear cycle and then we'll bottom out and we'll start a new cycle and a new bull market. But at the end, end of the day, you know, they're creating these as exit liquidity so that mom and pop, you know, every average Joe and Jane can buy them inside of their regular brokerage and their stock brokerage account right in their bank. They can buy the ETF. They'll suck everybody and their dog in last minute and then they'll use that as exit liquidity to pawn us off on us, right? They'll pawn it off their, their crypto on us. And then, like I said, once they get every, they open the floodgates and everybody's able to buy it because as of right now, you have to go in exchange, right? Which I recommend uphold to buy XLM. So there'll be links for this in the descri uh, description. Uh, you can also buy it on uh, a multitude of other ones, but that's the one I recommend. So you can check out uphold in the description. There's also Tangem. They just release a new ring. So it's a hardware wallet in self-custody. If you leave it on the exchange, you're, it's they control your private key. So it's not good to keep all of it on there, but I would check out Tangem in the comment section below. Uh, sorry, in the uh, description below, I'll leave a link for it and you can use POW as the code. So POW for the code, it'll get you 10% off and then you can get involved into the world of self-custody uh, self where you control the private keys. I've got Tangem wallet. I'm definitely going to be looking and getting the ring as well. Super cool. <laughs> it just reminded me of my precious uh, <laughs> from Lord of the Rings, but uh, super dope. And then, you know, I have another hardware wallet. I still have my ledger. I'm not a big fan of that. A tangent is the way to go, hands down. Uh, they have like a little credit card. It's amazing. And then, like I said, I rec recommend Uphold as well. But going in it there, it's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us in the Pursuit of Wealth. Hope you have a great night, and we'll see you again on the next video.